my name is Bob Everett and I'm a licensed wildlife rehabilitator. We have state and federal license and I'm with an organization called Wild Wings of California. I started to rehab uh, wild birds actually in 1972 when I saw one of my neighbors throw his lawn clippings in the trash and a nest of little baby mockingbirds went in the trash, so I dug them out, and <laughs> my wife and I and our three girls, we raised them. That's how we got started, and back in those days there was very little information, and really there wasn't fish and wildlife. Back in those days they didn't really regulate. If you wanted to do it, you just did it. Now, now these days it's altogether different. <laughs> but. So that's how we started, and um, it grew from there. Now we're a nonprofit 501c3 corporation, and there's uh, several other people besides me and my wife Judy. And we have a veterinarian that's very good. And uh, uh, we're all volunteer, we've never paid a penny of salary to anyone because we're always having to buy food, build cages, things like that. And we only rehab native wild birds. When you rehab birds of prey, you have to do it right. There's a lot of information you have to know. These are wild animals. They don't really get tame. I have to wear a glove. <laughs> yeah, these aren't pets at all. Yeah, it doesn't work that way with wild animals. So. And today, I brought three owls. Owls are a little more difficult to see because they're only out at night, generally. And so people are more excited about, <laughs> about seeing the owls. This is a western screech owl. And here in the garden, this is the most common owl but you've never seen one, have you? Um, when you're little, you have to be real careful and hide better. The way that you can tell the screech owls are around, you'll hear them. They talk to each other. All of the birds of prey around here, they, uh, they mate for life and they're territorial. And this is little Odie, and in the wild he would have a mate, and they would have a territory. <laughs> and uh, the noise they make, they don't, screech owls don't screech. Screech owls make a little, lovely little lilting twitter. It's kind of a, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> so if you're walking around in a park with trees, and it's well into dark, and you hear that sweet little sound. It's not a dove, it's a screech owl, and that's the way you know they're there. And this, he's not standing him up now, but the screech owl is a horned owl. He can stand up these big fierce horns. <laughs> look very intimidating. <laughs> Uh, he's clicking at me. That's fierce. <laughs> he's fierce. Uh, I have Odie because you can see his left wing. It uh, was injured pretty bad, and he's healed up quite well. He can fly a little bit from perch to perch, but he was picked up in the middle of Foothill Boulevard in Glendora. I get a lot of owls in because when they're out hunting at night and if they're near a street and the headlights hit them, it, it blinds them. And then they bounce off the windshield or the grill of the car. It's, yeah. And then they, come on, and then they get injured. But he's been with me eight years and he's had a good life. Our, Uh, well, raptors 
All raptors only eat meat. No fruit, no vegetables, no cereal. <laughs> only meat. Now, screech owls consider a moth or a grasshopper to be good meat. A small snake, lizard, small mice. They don't take the big stuff. I have other owls that I'll bring out to take care of the big stuff. <laughs> but um, they seem to find plenty to eat because there are a lot of them around. Owls have way better vision than we do. They can see as well at night as we can in the daytime. And so that's a huge advantage. It's it's such a huge advantage just to be a nocturnal predator in the first place. Then b being able to see well at night is another big advantage. And then owls don't fly fast. They fly silently. And they have a pretty big wingspan, most of them, but it's not built at all for speed. It's built for silent flight. And so, owls will cruise around through uh, a meadow, a forest, any, you know, grasslands. And they, uh, when they see what they want, they just go, they, they kill what they eat. They don't eat carry-on, road kills. They want it nice and fresh. So they, they kill with their talons. That's the claws on their feet. Their beak is actually kind of like the knife, fork, and spoon. They kill with their talons, they hold it down, then they rip off chunks of meat. Sometimes it's small enough they'll swallow it whole, but normally it's a little bigger than that, so they have to rip it up to eat it. But, um, yeah, they only, <laughs> they only eat meat. So, even if it's just a grasshopper or a moth, that's still meat <laughs> and protein. They love oak trees. And they can be in an oak tree, and they're the same color as the bark, and they're invisible. <laughs> and old oaks are full of cavities and holes and that's their favorite nesting spot. Uh, they'll chase out an acorn woodpecker. <laughs> you know? Yeah, they, they're, they're cavity nesters but they'll... Here's an interesting fact. There's not an owl in the world that builds its own nest and so they don't build a nest. They just use what's around. <laughs> This is a barn owl, and this girl, her name is Honey, and she is kind of a honey collar, but she has a sweet disposition. <laughs> so that's, I think barn owls are the most widespread bird in the world. They're on every continent except Antarctica. Where there's voles or mice, <laughs> there's barn owls. So the reason they're called barn owls is, like I said, there's not an owl in the world that builds its own nest. And so they will nest in a barn. That's really a nice. They think it's really nice that people build barns and they can nest in there. And then the hay and the grain in the barn, of course, attracts mice. <laughs> so, geez, live, like living in the candy store, <laughs> you know. And they're very common here in the botanic garden as well. They nest in the palm trees. Uh, I think you call that area the oasis. And there's several little baby barn owls <laughs> hatched out there every year. <laughs> and this is good habitat for them as well. Now, there are two kinds of owls in the world. There's the barn owl, and then there's all the rest. <laughs> and 
And all the other dozens of owls are called the typical owls. The barn owl, they actually hunt by hearing. You can tell this barn owl is hearing something, in fact, behind us. <laughs> that face is the way that face is because that face is an acoustic amplifier and they hunt by sound. Those hair-like structures on the face, the birds don't have hair and mammals don't have feathers. <laughs> so those hair-like structures are actually a modified feather called a bristle and they're hollow and they they transmit, they conduct sound waves perfectly. So any any sound that strikes that face is channeled to their ears. Now they do have ears, and they're pretty. You can, they don't have the ear lobes, but they have the big, pretty big hole. You can actually poke your little finger right down in there. It's a big hole, and so they have large ears. But um, all the sound that strikes their face is channeled to the ears. And they know how to. They know how far away it is, what direction it is. They can echolocate quite well. Probably the best way to put it is, barn owls see with their ears. I mean, <laughs> we see with our eyes. They, they, they perceive three-dimensional image of their surroundings, but they do it mostly with their ears. And they uh, can hear a mouse running around in the brush at up to 90 yards away. And so they, when they go hunting and they know where that mouse is because they can hear it, and it's, com it's, it's hidden in the brush, so it's invisible. So they have good vision, but that's not going to help them find that mouse if he's in the brush, which is what they specialize in. And so when they hear that mouse, say a football field away in the brush, and they'll fly over and then they'll hover above it. And they'll hover, when they're hovering about 10 to 12 feet above it, then they can hear its heartbeat, they can hear its respiration, they can hear it breathe. They know everything about the mouse. They know how big it is. They know which way its head's pointed. So then, because I've watched them hunt, you can watch barn owls hunt in a meadow on a full moon night. It's dark, so you know, they're out hunting, <laughs> but you can see them because they're white underneath. And they drop down and they talon the mouse with their talons. They kill with their feet. And then you can watch them, their drumstick muscles are, they're really poking that mouse. He's, he's dead in less than a second. And while they're doing that, they're looking all around because a coyote or some big predator can get them. They're vulnerable. So as soon as they kill their food that they just killed, they, they get up off the ground and fly up to a into a tree or some safe place to eat. Barn owls typically eat about four mice a night down there. You, and they have typically four to six, eight babies. So let's say there's six babies and two adults, the parents. Um, that's eight times four. That's 32 mice a night getting removed from your garden here. <laughs> so Barn owls are very beneficial. So owls really don't metabolize the bones. They will, they have enough acid to extract most of the calcium, but uh, the phosphate matrix is still there. So the bone basically is still there. And so school children can take apart the owl pellet, which when they do eat a mouse, 
they'll metabolize the protein and the fats and that's feces that comes out the rear end but the fur and the bones that's all rolled up into a ball called a pellet and they cough that out and so that's what you, you can walk under your barn owl nest down at the uh, oasis under the palm trees and you'll see those little fur balls under there and those are owl pellets and then you can take that apart and reassemble the whole skeletal structure of what they ate and it is mostly rodents, mice, just about exclusively mice. But I saw, oh, she's got a cast. Get that. She's casting. <laughs> there was actually a biologist, a group of biologists up in Oregon. This is going back 30, 40 years now. And they, when they walk into a forest and they're going to assess the biology of what's going on in there and they'll collect those pellets and then they take them apart and they can tell what and so one of the pellets had a um, the skeleton they couldn't identify but a paleontologist or those guys archaeologists he identified it as an extinct species of a rodent that wasn't exactly extinct yet <laughs> So, you know, it's, those pellets are, it's good information in those owl pellets. <laughs> and barn owls have the most wing area for body weight of any bird in the world. You spread your wings, come on. <laughs> they look almost like a moth. Barn owls typically weigh a, around one pound. So this is about a one pound bird. Maybe a little over a pound and an eighth, pound and a quarter at the most. They're very, they look like a butterfly or a moth when they yeah. fly, but they are completely silent when they fly. And when you see them perched in the daytime, they just blend right in. But at night, people will call me up and say, hey, I saw a snowy owl. <laughs> Barn owls, well, all owls can turn their head about three-fourths of the way around each direction. They have twice as many neck vertebrae as we do. Range finding. Cool. <laughs> this is a great horned owl. And the girls named him Bruce. <laughs> well, he's not standing his horns up greatly right now, but they can. The feather tufts, they, they can look like devil horns. I mean, they can go straight up. But he feels a little intimidated. Well, he's panting like a dog when they're out of breath. <laughs> Owls and hawks have a, a third eyelid. But once, once in a while you'll see him close that third eyelid. And owls, um, they do things with their vision that it's hard for us to comprehend. Um, they can actually, great horned owls, and I think most of the owls can focus each eye independently. Now the great horned owl, most owls, they can't rotate their eye in the socket. If they want to look to the left, they have to turn their whole head. Their eyes aren't round. They're more tubular. <laughs> uh, but they, they can focus each eye independently. And in their brain, they can think about the information coming into each eye independently. Um, they do a lot of things that 
we really, I don't think, understand yet with their vision. But the, now the great horned owl can hear very well, but they do mostly hunt by vision. They can really see good at night. Now those talons, they can generate about 35 pounds of pressure per talon point, and they, they really uh, can go right through stuff. <laughs> And I think the great horned owl is the only predator of skunks that come down from the top and talon them. So the skunks squirting is stink stuff, but the owl's unaffected. And the information that I've read say, it says that birds can't smell. Most, most birds, a few, but not so I guess if you can't smell the skunk, they taste good. And they take quite a few, um, uh, at night they'll take rattlesnakes on a hot night. They, they'll predate anything that's, that's uh, meat. And they can bite quite well too with that hook on their beak. It goes right through as well. But their talon power is what they kill with. And in the nighttime around here, the great horned owl is an apex raptor predator. Okay. Uh, most great horned owls, the female weighs four to five pounds. The males are three, three, three and a half pounds. In birds of prey, the female is the big strong one. The males are small. Anywhere like 30% smaller. And their wingspan is pretty broad. They have a lot of area. They're built for slow wing beats and their feathers are very soft and so they are silent when they fly. Each species has their own ability to survive in a different way. There's not usually that much competition. Like between the screech owl, the barn owl, and the great horned owl, they all live here and they all pursue different food sources from, from grasshoppers and moths and small mice to skunks and rattlesnakes, you know, <laughs> they, which is good. Okay, well right now is, uh, February, the first week of February. <laughs> so you got about two or three more weeks to go and then to trim, to do your pruning and trimming, trimming. Because if you uh, wait till March, April, May to cut down trees or prune them or cut down shrubbery or prune it, you're gonna have, I, I, I have so many baby birds and nests brought to me. Well, okay, so I get this call all the time. People are driving down the street and they'll see an injured hawk or an owl and they pull over and they call me up. And I usually tell them to, to call um, Animal Control or the Humane Society because they do bring me the the birds of prey that are injured. injured. Yeah. And you have to be very careful when you try to pick up an injured bird of prey because you the last thing you want to do is just walk over there and try to pick it up. You're gonna be in a world of hurt. They're, they're, they know. they're gonna roll over on their back, they're gonna have their talons ready and they're gonna say, come on, let's do it. <laughs> And yeah, you, if you find an injured bird of prey, you, you need to be very careful. Um, I actually do have three great horned owls, and they're in my 50 foot flight cage. And at the far end, I have a prey pit. So next week, a guy's going to bring three dozen rats and put in the prey pit. And the owls are gonna have to learn 
to go kill her own. And the rats will run, so then they got to learn how to, you know, <laughs> anticipate and kill. And they have to go to school and they have to get a passing grade before they graduate. You know, they have to be physically pretty much 100%. If you're not pretty much 100%, you won't live to see the next day. Um, to be a wildlife rehabilitator, there is a lot of education that you have to go through.